Hello everyone, welcome to DP Tutorials by Donny Jarwa. In this teaching lesson, we will emphasize and enunciate on one important lesson which is a device known as a cyclotron. A cyclotron is basically a device or an instrument used for accelerating charge particles used for accelerating charge particles in this case the charge particles will be positively charged particles which are nothing but protons we know that protons are nothing but positively charged particles so a cyclotron is a device for accelerating these charged particles to tremendously very very high speed such that these high speed charged particles will be able to a cater will to hit a target nucleus okay, to hit a target nucleus to give out for carrying out nuclear disintegration reaction okay nuclear disintegration reaction so this device was first uh, invented by Ernest O Lawrence and uh, MS Livingstone so this these two scientists are uh, from Canada from the University of California and uh, they are the ones okay they are the ones who uh, invented this device okay so this device was first invented by Ernest O Lawrence okay and Milton S Livingstone okay in the year 1937 in the University of California so what is this cyclotron a cyclotron is nothing but a device and it is nothing but a particle accelerator okay this is the device what type of device is a particle accelerator and it can produce radio isotopes by accelerating these charged particles okay, to tremendously very very high speed in the presence of what in the presence of the magnetic field so the charged particles considered will be positively charged particles which are protons deuterons or alpha particles so what are protons protons are nothing but the subatomic particles which are present where which are present inside the nucleus so these are the protons okay protons are nothing but positively charged particles if i have a deuteron that means proton will have h plus okay and a deuteron will be that type of particle in which the mass is 2 okay the mass of a proton is what h11 okay so that is the mass of the proton and also we have another charged particle which is the uh, alpha particle alpha particle is doubly ionized helium atom so this doubly ionized helium atom is nothing but an alpha particle so these types of particles are being accelerated inside a cyclotron to very very high speed okay to very very high speed such that it caters the nuclear disintegration reaction for the production of these radioisotopes which is meant for medicinal purposes for curing uh, cancers okay for curing cancers now when we look into the construction of this uh, cyclotron this is the picture of a cyclotron way back in 1937 okay, this picture is a picture of a cyclotron from uh, french it is a french cyclotron and it is way back okay, in 1937 so this is very very iconic okay it is in the french museum whereby when you look at the upper part okay this is the cyclotron it is a particle accelerator what is a uh, what is a cyclotron a cyclotron is nothing but a particle okay, particle accelerator it accelerates these particles to tremendously very very high speeds okay so uh, basically uh, when we talk about these uh, cyclotrons okay you must have uh, heard in the news okay when in our country also we have this uh, cyclotron okay which is located in calcutta okay this cyclotron which is available in india is this vecc okay? this vecc which is nothing but the variable okay it is variable variable energy cyclotron center okay? variable energy variable energy cyclotron center variable energy cyclotron cyclotron center it is located in 
Kolkata. Okay, this uh, cyclotron is located in Kolkata, and uh, it is a special type of cyclotron. It is, it is a special type of cyclotron which is being administered by the Department of Atomic Energy. Okay, by the Department of Atomic Energy. So uh, in this uh, center, they carry out. Uh, they accelerate these charged particles which are protons, neutrons or alpha particles to tremendously very very high speed okay? and it is very very uh, important in the sense in the field of research and development activity and it is basically used to perform research of uh, applied and basic nuclear sciences for the development of latest nuclear particle accelerator. So this accelerator, okay, it is it consists or it houses a cyclotron of two twenty four centimeters. Okay, this is the dimension. Okay, this is the dimension or the size of that cyclotron. It is two twenty four centimeters. So over here, when you look at the cyclotron, it consists of uh, basically it consists of two uh, semicircular D's. Okay, these are known as the D's. Okay, these two. So circular structures, okay, these two circular structures, these are known as what? These are known as the D's, semi-circular D's. So uh, from here, uh, when you look at this construction of a cyclotron, okay, we have these semi-circular D's, okay, these semi-circular D's, okay, these semi-circular D's, which are placed in an evacuated chamber, okay, which are placed in an evacuated chamber, and on top of these two D's, these Two hollow uh, metal chambers. These are known as what? These are known as these, which in the figure they are uh, indicated by D1 and D2. These are the two D's, okay? D shape, which is in the form of a D shape. Okay? D shape. Now, uh, from here, on top of the two D's, okay, we place these source of electromagnet, which is placed vertically above, which is placed vertically above these two Ds and across these two Ds a potential is applied by the help of this oscillator okay, a potential is applied by the help of this oscillator which maintain constant frequency that means from here that means by using the oscillator is that device which can reverse the polarity of the battery which means that at one point of time for one half cycle this will be positive and the other half cycle will be negative then for the next cycle uh, this which in the first case it is positive then it will be negative and order for the other half cycle if this is negative then this will be positive that is a oscillator it's nothing but a device which alternate the polarity of the battery so from here when you look at this diagram that means over here we will have uh, the source of proton this source of proton or the ion source is located at the center of the 2d's okay that means you will have to have you have to have some inert gas or uh, gases which will produce okay, which will you have to have some source or gas which produce these protons and these protons are initially located at the center of the gap okay there is a gap over here there is a gap between the two d's so the ion source is located at the center between the gap of the two d's so from here these since the ion is positive okay, since the ion is uh, positively charged or this proton we know that proton is positively charged by using the laws of Coulomb's law of electrostatics that means it will be attracted towards one end of what one end of the d's say like for instance okay say like for instance over here when we have that charged particle the source ion which is a positively charged which is in the case of a proton okay since this since this d okay, since this d or that or hollow, this hollow metal chamber is negatively charged, so it means that that uh, positive ion will enter this fastly. So this uh, ion, that means this ion, suppose see over here, this is the separation, this is the gap between the two Ds. If from here, okay, if from there, that means one end is positive and one end is negative, it means that the ion will enter. Suppose from here, if this is negatively charged, so which means that this, let this be D1. And let this be one. Let this be D two. And over here, that means the, if, if this is the oscillator, okay. So one end is at a positive potential, and this end is at a negative potential. 
and the proton which is a positively charged particle is located at the center of the beam. So if this is positive that means the ion will move towards the uh, the ion will move towards D1 which is maintained at the negative potential. It will uh, undergo semicircular path because of the presence of this oscillating electric field and also because, because of the presence of the magnetic field inside D. Then uh, once it undergoes one semicircular that means from here the, uh, this is the center that means the proton will move towards 1d and it will undergo one semicircle inside the first d okay, inside d1 then again there will be the gap and from here this positive ion will move towards what well, will move towards this second d and it will undergo oscillation and undergo another circular another semicircular part but with a higher radius so from here see when you look this is the first radius, then within till D1. Then if it moves into D2, the radius of the circular part keeps on what? Keeps on increasing. So as the charge particle moves or travels within the uh, 2Ds of the cyclotron, its radius increases as well as speed also increases. So which means that that is the working principle of a cyclotron. The working principle of a cyclotron is based on the fact that as the ion increases its radius, as the ion increases its radius, that means from the first uh, radius to the second radius to the semicircular part, from the first circular part, second circular part, third circular part, which means that the radius will keep on what? The radius will keep on increasing. As the radius keep on increasing, that means the velocity will also increase. So this is our uh, concept that we should know that as the radius of the circular part of the ion of the charge ion increases as the radius of the circular part of the charge ion increases it means that the velocity of the charge ion also increases once the velocity of the charge ion increases that means it will have one tremendously high speed and once the particle has tremendously high speed that means as the speed of the ion keeps on increasing that means from here there is one outland there is one outlet and from this outlet this charge ions will move with what would move with a very very high speed okay this charge ion will move with a tremendously high speed and it is sure to hit one and this charge ion is sure to hit a certain target which will be helpful in carrying certain nuclear disintegration reaction so from here this is one uh, diagram in which we have this oscillator this oscillator is nothing but a device which alternates the uh, polarity of the battery. Suppose if this is negative, suppose if this is your positive, that means this will be this n will be one. This n will be negative. For the first half cycle, that means an oscillator, that means it is a special type of device which is give you AC signal. One half of the AC signal will be positive. Another half of the AC signal will be one will be negative. So from here, when you look at this gap, this is the gap separating between two Gs, which is enclosed in an airtight chamber, and vertically we have this uh, magnet, okay, an electromagnet. One of the magnet will be north pole. Suppose if I name this as the north pole of the magnet, and this will be what? This will be the south pole of the magnet. And the magnetic field lines will move, okay, will move perpendicularly from the north pole of the magnet towards what? towards the south pole of the magnet and from here as the charge ion increases its speed as the charge ion increases its speed and also increases radius you will see that these arrows keep on increasing as the charge ion increases its speed and increases its radius okay this is this will be the direction this will be the trajectory okay? this will be the trajectory of the part you will find out that this ion will move with a tremendously high speed from this target and over here on this chamber on this chamber we have what we have a, a target nuclei which is a radioactive sample which is a radioactive sample once that proton once this high speed proton hits this target nucleus it this uh, target nucleus or radioactive sample will be able to give out what will be able to give out a tremendous amount of energy which is in the form of what million electron volts which will be able to give us electricity or it will be able to give us another new radioactive isotope so from here when you look at this figure we have these two uh, magnets 
or two for uh, semicircle uh, two circular magnets which is the north pole and over here this is the south pole so the magnetic field lines move from north pole to south pole okay in the vertical direction and over here these two d's these two d's are connected towards a high source okay these two d's are connected towards a high uh, alternating source you know, alternating source uh, alternating source which can reverse the polarity of the battery so if this is positive then this n of the oscillator will be negative so this ac source remember that in order to have an ac source you should have what it is nothing but an oscillator okay it is nothing but an oscillator so uh, the largest you should also know some idea about the uh, biggest okay the largest cyclotron is located in canada okay the largest cyclotron is located in canada this is in our country and another cyclotron which is located in canada which is the trium okay? t r i u m f this trium is located is the biggest uh, cyclotron which is located in the canadian uh, canadian lab or, or canada lab and uh, this uh, cyclotron basically it is an 18 meter diameter okay? 18 meter diameter of the 2d's when we talk about the diameter we are interested about those 2d's so which means that these 2d's these 2d's the length of the diameter of these 2d's okay, the diameter of these 2d's of uh, in that uh, triumph that means it is of one this diameter will be 18 meter okay and these photons inside the triumph lab which is in canada it travels a okay, uh, total distance of about 45 it travels at a speed of 45 kilometers which is equal to the uh, speed of line and it can generate energy okay, it can generate energy of the order of 520 million electron volts this energy is very very high okay, this energy is very very high and it is able to produce uh, electricity and also caters to nuclear disintegration reaction for the creation of radioisotopes for the creation of radioisotopes uh, which is used in radioisotopes which is used in medicinal uh, which is used in medicinal uh, purposes okay, which is used in medicinal purposes and way back this triumph it gets operated okay, it was operated in the year of 1974 okay, in the year 1974 and also keep in mind that we also have another particle accelerator okay, another particle accelerator which is a large lhc okay, lhc what is this lhc it is the uh, large hadron collider okay, large hadron collider this is also another particle accelerator but this particle accelerator it accelerates spin okay, uh, large hadron collider not so large hadron collider it is located in the it is located probably in the border okay, probably in the border between uh, switzerland and france okay. it is located probably in the border between switzerland france and switzerland and this uh, device or this hadron collider this particle accelerator it is uh, the tunnel okay, it is around 27 kilometer 27 kilometer the tunnel okay, that tunnel that tunnel that means that tunnel in which the cyclotron is being accelerated from one end to the other end okay this tunnel is of 27 kilometers and these uh, protons they accelerate at the speed they will move those protons or those charged particles they will move with a tremendously very very high speed such that they can cater to uh, study of nuclear physics okay nuclear physics so these are some of the applications which are uh, in the field of what nuclear physics so from here let us just view some of the uh, tutorial videos so that we can uh, understand about the construction the working as well as the uh, principle of this uh, cyclotron okay, of this cyclotron so we will look at this video
it needs to accelerate charged particles like protons and neutrons. This results in production of high energy charged particles. In nuclear physics, such energized particles are used to bombard nuclei causing nuclear reactions. A positively charged particle can be accelerated to high energy with the help of an oscillating electric field. By making it cross the same electric field time and again with the use of a strong magnetic field. Two hollow half cylinders made of high conductive metals known as D's are so placed that the straight edge will be face to face with a small gap between them. Now these two D's are connected to two terminals of an alternating voltage source, an oscillator. It would help in changing polarity. If D1 is in the positive potential, then D2 will be in exact opposite, that is negative potential at the same time. In this way, they would be oscillating and an electric field would be created between them. One electromagnet is kept below the two Ds and one electromagnet is kept above the Ds. Bottom electromagnet will have north pole above and top electromagnet will have south pole below. This would create a magnetic field perpendicular to the direction of the electric field. This entire arrangement is sealed in a vacuum box. The two Ds create an electric field. The direction of electric field is horizontal. The direction of magnetic field is vertical. When we place a positively charged particle which may be a proton or a combination of proton and neutron both. Since D1 is positive, D2 is negative, there is an electric field between them. Now a force acts upon the charged particle and its direction would be the direction of E. Because of this force, the charged particle gets acceleration and because of acceleration, the speed increases till it enters the D. Since D is an enclosed container, so the value of electric field is zero. So force becomes zero and acceleration becomes zero. So inside the container, there is no electric field, but there is magnetic field and its direction is north. The charged particle now moves perpendicular to the direction of the magnetic field. It experiences a force in a direction perpendicular to the plane containing V and D. This force provides the centripetal force and makes the charged particle move along a circular path of radius. R is equal to mv upon q times b. The particle makes a semicircle and comes to the gap. The time taken is T by 2. Because if the time taken to complete one circle is T, then the time taken to complete semicircle would be T by 2. As soon as the particle comes to end, it is influenced by electric field. When the particle was born, its velocity was 0. When it enters the D, its velocity is V and it is constant because the magnetic field cannot change the velocity. The oscillator will change the polarity. When it comes out of D, it again comes under the influence of electric field. The electric field accelerates the charged particle to V1. When it enters D2, the velocity would remain constant. Now D2 becomes positive and D1 becomes negative. When it comes out of D, it again comes under the influence of electric field.
the electric field accelerates the charged particle. The particle would now move from D2 to D1 because its velocity would increase to V2. When it enters D1 again, the velocity would remain constant because the magnetic field cannot change the velocity but the particle would make a greater semicircle because it is coming inside the D with a greater velocity. When it comes out of D, it comes under the influence of electric field. Once again, the electric field accelerates the charged particle and now the velocity becomes V3. In this way, the particle moves in a circular path and with each circle, the velocity of the charged particle increases. If the velocity of a charged particle increases, the radius of the charged particle would also increase. Finally, when the particle has no more space to grow in radius, it is thrown out through a window. With such a high velocity, the particle has high energy and it hits the target. So that will be a small video clip with uh, regards to a cyclotron and now we will move on into uh, another derivation, another perspective derivation which uh, relates to a cyclotron. So from here the cyclotron is nothing but a device for accelerating charged particles and uh, when you look at this, this principle is important from examination point of view is that the motion of the charged particle okay, is always in a uniform magnetic field is independent of the speed of the particle and the radius of the circular path. When I talk about the motion of the particles that means there should be parameters to define the motion of the particle that means we should know what is the time period of uh, revolution of the charged particle we should also know the cyclotron frequency in which the charged particle is moving inside the cyclotron and also we should know the angular frequency all these three parameters time period cyclotron frequency and angular frequency are independent okay are independent of the speed okay are independent that means it does not depend upon the velocity and likewise also it does not depend upon the radius of the path. So, which means that all these three terms which describes the motion of the charged particle are constant. Okay, are constant. So, this is the working principle of a cyclotron. What is the working principle of a cyclotron? It is basically based on the principle that when a charged particle is placed in uniform magnetic field, that means the motion of the charged particle is independent of the speed of the particle and the radius of the path. When I talk about speed, I'm talking about velocity v and when I'm talking about the radius, that means radius r of the path. Now, when you refer again, okay, when you refer again from that uh, figure, okay, when you refer again from this figure, it is very, very obvious, okay, it is obvious that uh, one of the circular path, okay, one of the circular path, uh, one of the d's will be at a positive potential and the other d will be what will be at a negative potential again let, let us reiterate okay? let us reiterate what we have learned from the video clip and also what i have explained to you okay? so when you look at this uh, at this diagram that means we have two d's okay we have these two d's and first the first d will be at a positive potential and the other d will be at a negative potential so which means that uh, over here that means uh, in, in one of the days in one of the days the charge particle okay, will be uh, coming from the uh, center of the gap between the two days then by the help of that oscillator which it uh, can change its polarity from positive to negative that means that positive charge particle will move to the d having a negative potential okay suppose from here if this is at a negative potential and this is at a positive potential that proton okay, which is at the center of the d it will move towards the uh, 
plus D, we will move to D1, which is maintained as a negative potential because of what? The force of attraction and also because of what? Because of the electric field generated, because of the electric field generated by this one, by this oscillator or high frequency as a accelerating charge particle because it is based from that relation. How can it get force? That means we have this charge particle, particles will always have charge Q. And because of the presence of the electric field, because of the presence of the electric field, the electric field is horizontal. That means if this D1 is positive and if D2 is positive, this is D2 is positive and D1 is negative, that means this will be the direction of what? Of my electric field. The electric field will be always directed from the positive end to the negative end. So because of this, if you multiply Q and E, that means it will be there will be some force and once there is force we know that photons will be all will be having mass so there will be one so that photon will be accelerated through a certain uh, velocity okay so as the charge particle moves inside the center or moves inside these two d's moving from one d okay moving from one circle semicircular part into another d with another circular part that means it increases its radius and also the speed also increases okay and once it increases the speed and the radii you will find out that from here that means if there is no more space within the two d's that means this charge ion will come out with a very very high speed it will come out with a very very high speed and it will hit this target nucleus and that is why it will be able to produce these radioactive samples okay, or radioactive isotopes okay, for many purposes with a huge amount of energy now from here uh, that is the working principle of a cyclotron let us move on into the construction okay from here it consists of two semicircular d's okay d1 and d2 consists of two d shape all these d shaped hollow semicircular metal chambers are known as d's okay d1 and d2 these are known as what the d's the two d's are placed horizontally with a gap separating them the D's are connected to the one to the high frequency electric field okay, by the help of an oscillator. The potential alternates its polarity with the same frequency as the circular motion of the charged particle increases on going from one D to another D, which means that it increases. Suppose at the first instance, if D1 is positive, then the other D will be negative. Then for the other half cycle, if this first D is negative, then this the second D will be what will be negative. That is the meaning that it alternates its polarity. Then the D's enclosed is enclosed in the steel box, which is placed between the two poles of a strong electromagnet in the vertical direction. So from here, what happens from the working, from the working aspect? Okay? So from here, the positive ion, the positive ion might be proton, it might be neutrons, it might be alpha particles. Okay, it is always located at the center of the gap between the two d's and they are accelerated towards the d suppose like for instance over here i have this is d1 and i have over here this is d2 okay this is the circular source okay this is the circular source and this is negative and this is positive then it is obvious that that charge particle will move towards d1 uh, in the first case because you know that the charge particle is positively in charge so from here inside the D, suppose let that, let that charge particle be accelerated towards D1, okay, which is maintained since this D1 is maintained at a negative potential. Then due to the perpendicular magnetic field ion, it describes what? It describes a semi-circular part inside the uh, inside this D1 and which is the gap between D1 and D2. So from here, see when this charge particle moves. It, and it undergoes this semicircular part and it reaches this gap. Okay? It reaches this gap between D1 and D2. Then it will move into the, it will move on to D2. From D1, it will move to D2. But the moment it moves to D2, that means the polarity of this uh, oscillator it changes. From positive, it changes into negative. And from negative, it changes into what? It changes into positive. So from here, which means that. Once it reaches the gap between D1 and D2, by this time the polarity of D1 and D2 gets reversed. Okay, so D1, D1 will become positive, 
while d2 will become 1 negative the ion then accelerates to 1 the ion then accelerates to d2 and undergoes another semicircular path but with 1 with increase in radius and with greater speed okay there should be increase in radius and also there should be one increase in speed when it moves from one d to the other d <coughs> and from here the process is repeated till the ion acquires one speed equivalent to the speed of light so the speed of the ion once it moves out from that uh, semicircular d will move with a very very high speed and during this revolution the ion will gain energy because when we have velocity, our intuition is that it will have one, it will have energy. But since the iron is moving, is under the state of motion, so it will have one, it will have kinetic energy. We know the formula of kinetic energy is half one, half mv square, okay, half mv square. So once we know the velocity, we can find out how much is the energy of uh, the iron. So from here we will deduce some parameters which are important from examination point of view. Okay, so these are the parameters. First, number one, let us deduce the radius of the circular path. Okay, when you look at this uh, diagram, that means over here this will be the north pole of the electromagnet, this will be the south pole of the electromagnet, and over here there will be two Ds. Okay, over here there will be two Ds, first D, uh, D1, and the other D will be one, will be D2, and the charged particle is at the center. Now, what happens? Suppose uh, let us uh, discuss the case in which if the charged particle is located over here, suppose the charged particle is located over here, and let r be the radius of this orbit or of that circular part, and we know that these are the direction of our one of our magnetic field, okay, from the north pole to the south pole. Then it is obvious that this charged particle will move with a certain velocity, with a certain velocity represented by this pink colored vector in this direction. The velocity of the particle is always okay, it is always tangent to the path. So when the particle is over here, that means the velocity will be in this direction. When the particle is over here, when the positive charged particle is over here, that means the velocity will be in that direction. So which means that it is always tangent to the path or perpendicular to the path. So from here. Uh, that means there are two vectors that means the v vector the velocity vector and the magnetic field vector velocity vector and the magnetic field vector so we expect that there will be a force how will that particle move on okay how will that particle comes on is because of what is because of the presence of the magnetic force okay so from here when the charged particle is placed in a uniform magnetic field it will always experience what a magnetic force okay so it is because of this magnetic force that this charged particle will move out and from uh, this uh, from this uh, inner radius from the from the inner circular part from the smaller circular part it will increase the radius to the another circular part and again it will come out to this circular part that means the radius will keep on what the radius will keep on increasing okay from the first circular orbit to the second circular orbit from the second uh, circular orbit to the third circular orbit and so on and so forth so how will you apply relevant rules in order to find out in order to find out the direction of the magnetic force or the Lorentz force? Okay, how would you find out the direction of that Lorentz force? So we can make use, okay, we can make use, okay, we can make use of uh, we can make use of uh, this uh, Fleming's left hand rule. So over there we have that uh, left hand, okay, left hand in which uh, the Thumb will indicate the direction of the magnetic force. The index finger will indicate the direction of the magnetic field, and the central finger will indicate the direction of one of the uh, <coughs> direction of the velocity. So this will be one. Thumb will indicate the force. This will indicate the direction of the field, force field. Force field and this central finger will generally will indicate about what will indicate the direction. Okay, that central finger will indicate the direction. Suppose let that direction be v velocity. This will indicate the direction of one magnetic field, magnetic field v. The thumb will indicate the direction of your force. So when you align your fingers or when you place your fingers, okay, when you place your fingers in this direction, which means that the thumb. See, my central finger. 
your central uh, your index finger is pointing your index finger is pointing in the direction of v and when you look at this central finger which is your v that means it is in this direction then where is this force heading your force your force is acting in a direction which is perpendicular and outwards which means that each time the particle suppose when the particle is over here the magnetic force will be outside perpendicular and outwards perpendicular and outwards so that will be the direction of your magnetic force okay magnetic force so from here these are what these are some of the uh, illustrations okay, with regards to okay with regards to uh, finding the direction of the magnetic force okay so from here again if you use your Fleming's left hand rule this is by using the Fleming's left hand rule or you can use your right hand okay this is my right hand you can use the right hand palm rule by using the right hand palm rule you outstretch first your fingers okay? you outstretch first your fingers in the direction of v so from here if i take my finger and if i outstretch okay if i outstretch my fingers in the direction of v that means i have to you have to rotate like that okay? you have to rotate like that that means this uh, right hand your palm of the right hand will point first in the direction of v okay and then once you point that uh, fingers in the direction of v then you take also your fingers and then you curl your fingers in the upward direction with respect to what with respect to the direction of v so from here this will be curl your fingers in the direction of your magnetic field okay, of your uh, of your not magnetic field of your velocity vector and then you curl your finger upwards you curl your finger upwards then this will be in the direction of one this will be in the direction of your b so from here when you curl your finger upwards that means it will be like that it will be vertical and upwards so the direction so when you look at your thumb okay, when you look at your thumb in that case this thumb is pointing one this thumb is pointing outwards which means that the magnetic force fm the magnetic force will be perpendicular and outwards perpendicular and obvious so this is the way how to uh, how to visualize the concept in which all those uh, magnetic force are experienced okay so from here when you look from that figure okay, when you look from this figure okay, it means that each time the uh, charged particle okay, each time the, each time the charged particle undergoes a circular path between the two d's okay, between the two d's what happens is that the velocity direction of the velocity and the direction of the magnetic field are in the same plane so the direction of the velocity and the direction of this magnetic field are in one are in the same plane so uh, what is obvious from here is that the direction of v and the direction of b are in the same plane so my magnetic force my magnetic force will be in the direction which is outwards but as the particle undergoes a semicircular path it also possess okay it also possess some force which makes the particle to move on a circular path what is that force which makes the particle to move on a circular path that force is what is known as the centripetal force this force will balance the particle such that it will be directed towards the center suppose that means with regards to the magnetic force by the charged particle due to the presence of the magnetic field there will be also what a centripetal force there will also be a centripetal force which makes that iron to move where to move on a circular path with a certain radius r so which means that over here the force the magnetic force the Lorentz magnetic force is balanced by the centripetal force of the revolution of the electron so from there we will move on into uh, this discussion okay from here it is obvious okay it is obvious that the charged particle okay, the charged particle when it displays a uniform magnetic field it experience what a magnetic force or Lorentz magnetic force so that Lorentz magnetic force in this case will be given by this expression it will be given by this expression okay i will write as fm fm equals sign one b q v sine of theta okay sine of theta and from here it is obvious that the direction of this v vector 
and the direction of the B vector are perpendicular. This V and B are perpendicular to each other. Yeah, B and B are perpendicular to each other, which means that over here that V is perpendicular to B. So when V is perpendicular to V, it means that the angle between them is how much? The angle between them is 90 degree, which it uh, which we can write over here that this Fn, which we can write over here that this Fn will be equal to what? This Fm will be equal to simply BQV under the condition that sine of 90 degree will be equal to 1, will be equal to 1, which means that over here the force, the Lorentz magnetic force on the entire circular part, here on the entire circular part will be given by this equation Fm equal BQV. Then this Lorentz magnetic force given by this equation. This Lorentz magnetic force given by this equation, that means equation 1, it provides the necessary force for the particle to move where on the circular part. And this force is what is known as the centripetal force. Okay? This force is known as the centripetal force, which means that over here we can write the, the expression for the centripetal force, that the centripetal force its direction is always directed towards the center. Then we know that the centripetal force is given by what? mv square divided by r. So let us mark this as equation 2. That means at certain instant, it is always found out that the magnitude of fm and the magnitude of fc are equal. Keep in mind that fm is directed outwards, the direction of fm is outwards, and the direction of fc is inwards. So from here, uh, Equating equation 1 and equation 2, that means we can write, that means over here, Fc and Fm are equal. So from here, Fc, what is the expression for Fc? It is mv square divided by r and this Fm will be equal to bqv. So v and v, we can cancel, so we can cancel one v from here. And another v from there to find out the expression for r. So from here we can get r to be equal to 1. r will be equal to mv divided by bq. mv divided by bq. So this is the expression. This is the expression for the radius of the circular part, which means that from here clearly that r, mass of the proton, mass of the charged particle will be constant, the strength of the magnetic field from the electromagnet also will be constant even the magnitude of the charge of the particle also will be constant which means that this r is the radius of the part is directly proportional to v that means when r when the radius of the circular part increases that means this is the velocity of the orbital velocity of the positively charged particle inside the 2Ds of a cyclotron will also increase. So this is the expression. This gives what? This gives the expression for the radius of the circular part. Now, some parameters that we need to discuss is that we also need to focus on the uh, this parameter number 2, which is the time period T, the cyclotron frequency F, and the angular frequency omega. So when we talk about these parameters, these parameters are the parameters which will help to discuss the motion of the charge particle. So from here we know that the time period is the inverse. Okay? The time period is nothing but since the particle is moving on a circular part and that circular part is having a radius r and since that positively charged particle, with that positively charged particle, that positively charged particle, this positively charged particle is moving with what? It's moving with a certain velocity v. So when it moves one circle, when it, when any particle on moves one complete cycle or one complete oscillation, that is what is known as your time period. So from here, by definition, it means that the time period that means it is we know that time period will be one distance divided by the velocity. Okay, distance divided by velocity. So, what is distance over here? The distance will be the circumference of this part. So, over here, T will be the circumference of the part. Okay, I'll just write in short. T 
टी विल बी सॉकम्फ्रेंस सॉकम्फ्रेंस ऑफ द पॉट सॉकम्फ्रेंस ऑफ द पॉट डिवाइडेड बाय वन डिवाइडेड बाय द विडोसिटी so which means that this t over here okay this t over here this t will be equal to 1 this t will be equal to y is by r divided by v then uh, what is this radius of the circular part okay, what is this radius of the circular part we have this expression with okay, the radius of the circular part r given by this so let us mark this as equation equation number 3 i mean okay, let us mark that as equation number 3 given by equation 3 the radius of the circular part given by equation 3 is 1 it is mv divided by 1 divided by bq so when you put on this equation for finding out the expression for the time period okay, for finding out the expression for the time period it is found out that uh, this equation 4 okay, this equation 4 reduces to t equal 1 equal twice Pi divided by one divided by v. So the x I will use this r to replace by this expression. So this will be what? This will be m v divided by one divided by v q. So v and v will get cancelled. So the expression for the time period t will be equal to what? Will be equal to twice pi m divided by one divided by v q. So when you look at this expression also, it is very evident and clear that all the parameters on this right hand side of the equation are constant q is constant pi is constant m is constant b is constant and even the charge of that ion is also constant so it is independent of the velocity so we here since there is no term containing v so it is independent of the velocity cyclotron frequency so when we talk about the cyclotron frequency it is the inverse of the time period So the cyclotron frequency denoted by small f, it is the inverse of the time period, one divided by t. So if you take the reciprocal of this, that means the cyclotron frequency will take the formula of one, b q divided by twice pi m. Okay, b q divided by twice pi m in terms of hertz. Okay, time the time period will be expressed in seconds and frequency will be expressed in hertz, which means that this frequency. Okay, The cyclotron frequency will take the expression of b q divided by one divided by y pi m. So from here, these are the expression. Even the cyclotron frequency also. When you look at this expression, all the terms are what? All the terms are constant. Now let us move on into the angular frequency. What is this angular frequency? Angular frequency is that type of parameter which discusses about the angle. Say when The cyclotron is moving in the circular part. So that means if this is the axis through which the uh, particle is moving, that means if the particle is located at this point A, and if the particle is located at this point B, that means we can find what we can find the angular spin omega or angular frequency. What is this angular frequency? The angular frequency that means it is twice. We know that uh, when For one time period, for one revolution, that means if it moves from A and coming back to point point A, that means the total angular displacement. This is theta. Okay? Angular frequency. It is one angular displacement divided by time. So if you take full omega, if I have this is the part and this is the axis to which it revolves. Okay, and when the particle undergoes one oscillation from Point A again up to point A. That means this total angular displacement will be equal to one. Will be equal to twice pi. So which means that from here, uh, our idea about the angular frequency is angular displacement divided by time period. So our displacement for one complete cycle or for one orbit will be twice pi r. If r is the radius of the circular part, and this will be t. So what is One divided by t. That one divided by t is nothing but one. It is twice pi. Um, twice pi. Okay, there's some uh, mistake. This is not twice pi. Our angular frequency will be equal to twice pi. Twice pi. And over here, one divided by f is nothing but frequency. So this is the expression for what cyclotron 
frequency from here. So I will just write the angular frequency omega. Okay, the angular frequency omega is given by the expression omega equal angular frequency omega. The angular frequency omega. This will be equal to one. This will be equal to twice pi f. And over here, this will be equal to twice pi. What is the expression for f from here? This will be equal to b q divided by one divided by twice pi m. So b q divided by twice pi m. And from here, when you look at the expression for omega, that means twice pi and twice pi will get cancelled, so you get the expression of b q divided by one divided by m. Even from here, the expression for the angular frequency, that means all the terms are constant, which means that the angular frequency is also constant. So, this will be the third form, this will be uh, the third term, second term, as well as the first term. Both the time period, cyclotron frequency, okay, time period is the time period, cyclotron frequency and this angular frequency all these are constant okay all these are constant so all the above the expression which means for time period t angular frequency and cyclotron all these terms are what all the terms that means bq divided by m all these terms are constant that means it is depending only upon the type of charge q used okay? it is dependent only upon the type of charge q used angular frequency omega is constant even the cyclotron frequency f is constant so it depends only upon the type of charge q and the magnetic string of the magnetic field b okay but whereas m is always constant so from here since the expression for the angular frequency this expression for the angular frequency omega equal i can write bq or i can write qb divided by m is independent of the radius r so when you look up from this expression it does not have any term containing r so it means that the charge ion always maintains the same time period of revolution as the speed of the ion increases okay, which means that the time period will always be constant the time period will always be constant whereas speed will always increase okay. time period is what uh, twice pi r divided by v this will in, uh, uh, this will remain the same whereas v will always increases then we will consider another important parameter which is to find the maximum kinetic energy of the positive ion. Maximum uh, kinetic energy of the positive ion is achieved when the ion is located at the last point before it comes out from that or from that what well, from that uh, target shape. Suppose from here from that window the blue that charge particle it comes out okay? it comes out from here okay? it comes out suppose from uh, from here from this window it comes out so that will be what that will be the largest uh, largest one it will move with the largest orbit okay so from here this will be one this will be the largest orbit suppose from here this will be one this will be the largest orbit and it will comes out from here okay if it comes out from this small window, okay, from that small window over here, from this window, okay. So this will be the positive ion proton. Okay, we will move up from here. This will be the inner orbit. As uh, the ion keeps on revolving, it will move with a high speed, and then it will move. It will acquire the last. If there is no more space to revolve, but to rotate, that means it will come out from this window with a very very tremendous high speed. So from here, we will derive. The expression for the kinetic energy what will be the kinetic energy of motion of the positive ion so from here suppose let rm be the radius be the maximum radius okay, of the largest orbit which means from here this is what this is done rm and this velocity will be one vm okay and vm be the maximum speed of revolution of the ion then from here also you have to make use of that expression the Lorentz magnetic force okay the Lorentz magnetic force in this case will be equal to what bq vm sin theta but over here sin theta will be equal to 90 sin theta it will be a sine of theta will be equal to that sine of 90 degree which will be equal to 1 under the condition that r 
M is always perpendicular to the direction of your magnetic field B. Then from here, the centripetal force will be given by M Vm whole square divided by 1 divided by Rm. M Vm. Vm is the maximum velocity and Rm is the uh, largest radius. Okay. So from here, how to find out Vm? 1V and 1V will get cancelled. So this Vm in this case, so this Vm in this case will be equal to BQR, so BQRM, okay, BQRM divided by M. So BQRM divided by divided by M. This is the expression. BQRM divided by 1. BQRM divided by M. This is the expression for the velocity. Okay, velocity. Then, uh, how to find out the maximum kinetic energy? The maximum kinetic energy, that means we know that uh, kinetic energy will take the formula of half mv square. Okay? Half mv square, so over here will be half m vm whole square. So this is my vm. Then over here we will have half m, use this expression, then this will be bq rm whole thing square divided by 1 divided by m square 1m and 1m will get cancelled so we will get the expression of ke okay? this ke will be equal to 1 this will be equal to b square u square rm whole square divided by 1 divided by 2 and 1m 2m that is the expression for the kinetic energy, which means that this kinetic energy clearly from there, the kinetic energy clearly from there, the kinetic energy, the kinetic energy is dependent upon the uh, square of the radius. The okay, square of the radius that means as the radius of the circular part increase from here, first radius, second radius, third radius, as the radius of the circular part increases, okay, as the radius of the circular part increases, the kinetic energy also will work. The kinetic energy will also increase. Okay, the kinetic energy will also increase. Note, okay, point number one is that we have uh, deduced the expression of R equal and the radius of the part of the ion is given by this expression. Okay, and from here, uh, it is very very evident that R is directly proportional to V, which means that as uh, V increases, R also will increase. Then another important point that we have considered is that uh, all these parameters of T, okay, time period, cyclotron frequency, angular frequency, all these frequencies are independent of the velocity V. So they are one. They are constant. So that is why uh, as the radius of, as the ion keeps on increasing its speed, it travels with the same uh, time period, same uh, angular frequency and also same cyclotron frequency. And Number three is that the kinetic energy, the expression for the maximum kinetic energy from here, it is directly proportional to the square of the radius. That means as the radius increases, kinetic energy also increases. Then which means that over here, if uh, the kinetic energy, if radius r is 2, that means the kinetic energy will be equal to what? 4 times. So from here, let us study one example in which we have a charge ion. A and B having the same mass and same charge and are revolving in a uniform magnetic field, which means B is constant. B is constant. Then over here, there are parts, uh, radii is R E equal to 2 centimeters and R B is equal to 4 centimeters. So from here, you can visualize that uh, the diagram will be like this. Okay? This will be 2 centimeters R A and another radius, okay? another radius that means the uh, the radius over here will be what? Will be 4 centimeters. Let us find out what is the energy. So we know, uh, let, okay, we know the energy, the kinetic energy of the particle of ion A. It is given by that expression. If you remember, okay, if you recall, it will be given by B square, Q square, okay. Over here, this will be R E whole thing square divided by 1, divided by twice M. Two charge ions having the same mass. When I say same mass, that means mass of both E and B will be M and same charge. 
that is why this charge also will be Q. So that is why I have not write PA or QB. Then from here, that means we have B square, B square divided by what? Divided by twice M. And over here we have RA whole thing square, but what is that RA? RA will be 2 centimeters whole square. Then EB. EB will take this formula of B square, B square, yeah, RB whole thing square divided by twice m which in this case this will be equal to b square b square divided by twice m yeah, divided by twice m twice m into what is this rb this rb will be equal to 4 4 1 4 square so when you want to find uh, the comparison between the ratios that means you have to divide find the ratio means what means you have to find EA divided by 1, EA divided by EB. So what is EA divided by EB? This is the expression. We have 1. We have B square, Q square divided by twice M. Then 2 square will be equal to 4. And over here also we have B square, Q square divided by twice M. And this expression over here, 4 square will be equal to 1, 16. Which means that from here, some of the terms also will get neutralized. This and this will get cancelled. So you have 4 divided by 16. So will be the answer will be equal to 1. The answer will be equal to 1 divided by 4. Which means that this expression of EA is to, is to EB will be equal to 1. 1 is to 4. Which means, okay, I mean, which means this is the conclusion. Which means that this EA this EA or that EB is 4 times EA. Okay? That EB is 4 times EA, which means that if this is the ion A and if this is the ion B, that means the ion B will have energy which is 4 times the energy of ion A. Okay? Ion B will have the energy, ion B will have the energy which is 4 times. Okay. Ion B will have the energy which is 4 times, this ion B will have the energy which is 4 times that of ion A, which uh, establishes or confirms that as the radius increases, the energy will also increase. Just go through this particular lecture so that you will understand the clear concept of a cyclotron, its construction, working and important parameters. Thank you.